Do you want an amazing marriage? Are you ready to take your marriage to the next level? Then stick around for your Marriage Matters podcast with Marriage Coach Lynn. Let's put some fun and sizzle into your relationship. Happy Easter and happy spring. Do you consider spring a time of renewal? Are you doing anything to renew or enliven your relationship? Do something different. Do something important. Do something exciting. Do something meaningful. Make a change in yourself for the betterment of your marriage. Breathe life into your marriage and continue down the path of satisfaction. Did you enjoy my interview with Olivia's story? Episode 6 was released on March 29, 2018. We had a great conversation via Skype. It's available on my YouTube channel, Marriage Coach Lynn, in video form. Watch today and be inspired. Leave comments. If you gained something from the interview, leave comments and let me know. I can provide many more inspirational interviews if that's what you'd like. Everyone likes to talk about communication, how if we simply improve our communication, our marriages will improve. One important aspect of communication is how do we handle disagreements or conflict? In today's show, we will talk about accepting each other's influence and the importance it plays in having a successful marriage. I must emphasize that if we accept each other's influence, we'd be better equipped at managing conflict. This is the fifth level of the Sound Relationship House, a theory put forth by Dr. John Gottman after a few decades of research. Managing conflict lends itself to a few shows, and we will be talking about how to dialogue with your partner and the importance of practicing self-soothing in upcoming episodes. Did you know that up to 70% of our disagreements are not likely to be resolved? We simply have differing viewpoints and perceptions and opinions. Some of these differences would be like trying to convert a Mormon to a Jehovah's Witness. We have to agree to disagree. Many newlyweds and those in their early years of marriage think that they have to resolve every disagreement, argue until someone's viewpoint has been changed. We run into problems if our goal is to convert or persuade someone of something contrary to what we believe. We need to maintain honor and respect for our partner as we dialogue, not focused on resolving everything at the expense in order to get a win for ourselves. It's more important as we discuss difficult issues to understand each other's viewpoint, to truly care about our spouse's viewpoint and not be so focused on our own opinion. Today's topic is accepting each other's influence, what it is, what the risks are if you don't accept each other's influence, and what the payoffs are. In addition, I'd like to show you that if you accept each other's influence, you will most likely deal with conflict smoothly and painlessly. Is this something you'd like to have more of in your relationship? Accepting someone's influence means you not only take into consideration your partner's thoughts, feelings, and values, but that you truly listen and care. It's not a fiend politeness of letting your spouse talk with the intention of you getting your way, but you consider what they have to say as important. You honor, you respect, you care, and you demonstrate it. You accept their influence when it comes to decision making. There is an equal sharing of power. No one bulldozes over anyone. Here are five questions for you to answer true or false. Number one, I am interested in my partner's opinions on issues in our relationship. Two, I don't try to convince my partner to see things my way all the time. Three, I don't reject my partner's opinion every time we argue. Four, I believe my partner has more important things to say and I value them. Five, I believe we are partners with equal say in our relationship. If you answer true to all of these, great. You probably accept your partner's influence. If you did not, you can start by working on your empathy, listening skills, and letting go of the need to control and to be self-righteous. Marriage is not about getting our own way. It's about being a united team on the path to bigger and better things. 
Dr. John Gottman found that there are differences between men and women when it comes to accepting influence. Women are more likely to accept their husband's influence and men not as much. Men, if you do not accept your wife's influence, share power and decision making in your household and honor and respect her point of view, there is an 80% chance that the marriage will self-destruct or be an unhappy one, especially from the wife's point of view, and possibly end in divorce. When it comes to arguments, we could say that the more domineering partner has an upper hand. What we really need to know is that two other things are at work here. Number one, the partner who does not accept the other's influence often increases the negativity and escalates the dialogue to the point of quieting the partner down. And two, when a person, which is often the husband, does not accept his wife's influence, he is susceptible to treating his wife with contempt, criticism, acting defensively, and stonewalling. Or he might shut down and not speak or storm out of the room and refuse to communicate. Let me give you an example. Research shows that women are more agreeable. Let's say the husband says, you're not listening to me. The wife could escalate the dialogue and say, I won't listen to you when you're shouting at me. Instead, she might say, sorry, I'm listening now. The Gottmans found that a man who is defensive and protective of his territory might contribute to escalating the conversation, which, as you know, often ends up in a stalemate, silence, or walking out on the partner until you both cool off. So what are the risks of not accepting your partner's influence? One, escalation of arguments to the point of becoming poor communicators. This leads to number two, over time, you have a shutdown, a slow estrangement in your relationship. You give up, give in, and grow apart. Number three, the third risk of not accepting your partner's influence is instability in the marriage. After a while, you don't know where you stand. The honor and respect goes out the window. Ladies and gentlemen, married and unmarried listeners, you run a grave risk if you don't accept your partner's influence. One of you will probably be unhappy for a while, and then both of you will be unhappy. Is this what you want? So let me talk about the payoffs of accepting influence. Wives of husbands who accept their influence are less likely to be harsh with their husbands when difficult topics emerge in the marriage. You are able to converse more civilly when you accept each other's influence. You are more likely to navigate and negotiate through tough times more successfully. Your marriage is more likely to thrive. You are more likely to willingly compromise and reach positive results. You blame less and, and you don't walk away in a huff thinking, ugh, my partner bullied me into a decision I was not ready for. And psst, do you want a higher quality and quantity sex life? Men, accept your wife's influence. Accepting each other's influence gives you a firm foundation for compromise when compromise is called for. Again, I, I like to repeat myself because it, it really does happen. You're sharing power in decision making. There's mutual respect. There's a stronger bond and friendship. And like I said, there's probably more play and more sex in your marriage too. Can you see how these levels are building as we move up the sound relationship house? Please listen to previous episodes if you haven't already done so, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, we also need to yield to our partner. We're not weak if we say things like, whatever my spouse says is fine with me. It's funny to see young married couples who keep track, who pay attention to a sense of fairness, who want to dump on their spouses what they don't want to do. It's something that you can observe as young marrieds are trying to please each other and as they forge a sense of coupleness. I like talking with older men over 70 who are happy and content with their lives and their long-term marriage. They often say, I do whatever my wife wants. Or maybe, you know, we think that he's, he's a wimp or he's passive, but he's not. Many of these men have settled into acceptance and forming a gentle, peaceful relationship. It's very empowering. Another little fact, 
Women will bring up difficult relationship issues over 80% of the time, and men often like to avoid discussing. Why is that? Well, it's partly related to shame. A man feels he needs to fix problems and fix them soon. He feels burdened, so he doesn't want to be reminded of inadequacies that he feels. This doesn't mean that the marriage is troubled, not at all. It's a natural human reaction and response. What men can do who are listening, you can simply remember that you are a team. It is not to be taken personally. Discussing issues in your marriage is a great opportunity to simply sharing. Accept each other's influence and realize how important it is to the health of your marriage. When you go out to dinner and see older couples chatting with each other with fondness, smiling, and relaxed, I bet they both accept each other's influence and that they have a good marriage. For today's exercise, I want you to ask your spouse, what's it like being married to me? And just listen to the reply. What's it like being married to me? We've come to the end of another episode. Remember to check out my website, marriagecoachlynn.com, YouTube channel, Marriage Coach Lynn. Did you know that I started a Facebook group titled Your Marriage Matters Podcast? That's a place for you to talk about the topics discussed on the podcast. I have many more followers on my Facebook page, though, Marriage Coach Lynn. As always, you can write to me at any time. My email address is lynn at marriagecoachlynn.com. Tell me what you liked about today's episode and please post a rating and review. Until next time, make your marriage great.